The scripture reading today is John 10, verses 1 through 21. I assure you that whoever doesn't enter into the sheep pen through the gate, but climbs over the wall, is a thief and an outlaw. The one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The guard at the gate opens the gate for him, and the shepherd listens to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Whenever he has gathered all of his sheep, he goes before them, and they follow him, because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger, but will run away, because they don't know the stranger's voice. Those who heard Jesus use this analogy who heard Jesus use this analogy, didn't understand what he was saying. So Jesus spoke again, I assure you that I am the gate of the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and outlaws, but the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief enters only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came so that they could have life, indeed so that they could live life to the fullest. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. When the hired hand sees the wolf coming, he leaves the sheep and runs away. That's because he isn't the shepherd. The sheep aren't really his. So the wolf attacks the sheep and scatters them. He's only a hired hand and the sheep don't matter to him. I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. I give up my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that don't belong to this sheep pen. I must lead them too. They will listen to my voice and there will be one flock with one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me. I give up my life so that I can take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I give it up because I want to. I have the right to give it up and I have the right to take it up again. I received this commandment from my father. There was another division among the Jews because of Jesus' words. Many of them said, He has a demon and has lost his mind. Why listen to him? Others said, These aren't the words of someone who has a demon. Can a demon heal the eyes of people who are blind? This is the word of God for the people of God. Action, I promise. She is precious. And for me, sheep has been a learning curve. <laughs> Learning about shepherds is a learning curve. We did not grow up with them in our family, and I grew up in a small town in California where lots of kids did 4-H and FFA, and any time we broached the conversation with my parents, the answer was the same. You may be in 4-H, we will not do animals. It was not about bunnies or guinea pigs or sheep or pigs. In particular, they were just all a hard stop no. We had dogs and we had cats and those things were just fine. I could do ceramics. I could do sewing. I could do those kinds of 4-H learning in classes, but the animals were just no. <laughs> so as a pastor, when we come across passages that are about the shepherd, that are about sheep, I've had to study. I've had to learn. I've had to read up. What are they like to sort of break outside the bonds of the stereotypes? And they're just so sweet. They're just so sweet. And I know that this is not normal procedure, 
right? Normally it's lambing season and they go out in the fields with their moms and they hang out and they nurse out there and they wean out there and they sort of learn to do life together. But every once in a while you get a friend who needs a little extra TLC. And for me, this little precious Jimmy teaches me just about the nature of that relationship between sheep and shepherd the nurture that is required, the intention that is part of the story, the way that the shepherd has to know what's required. For my own kids, who would gladly keep Jimmy forever and ever, it's daunting, right? I don't know anything about sheep. Even, you know, preaching a sermon about sheep is not the same as raising sheep. Let's be very clear about that. I don't know how it works. I don't know how to trim their hooves. I don't know what to look out about infections or hair care or shearing or all those things. And any of us that has had a pet at home, we know that they are lots of work, right? How many of us have ever read, have ever raised, that's the word I want, a dog or a cat? How many of us ever brought one home because our child promised they would take care of it. They would feed it, they would water it, they would clean up after it, they would take it for all the walks, they would play with it, they would teach it all the tricks. Anybody? Oh, there's good, there's a couple more suckers in the room. All right, so we know what it's like and how many of our children failed to complete that promise? Every last one of them. Because animals are hard work. And not just one, but a whole herd of sheep. The shepherd is attending to each of them, knowing each of them, caring for each of them, and caring for the special ones who need that extra TLC just teaches you about the love that is there for all of them. Because the shepherd has to know which one needs more, right? Which one needs a splint? Which one's weaning? Which one isn't getting fed by mama? Which one's sort of been cast out? Which one isn't keeping up? Which one's being left behind? Which one's most at risk? They have to know all those things. And when Jesus tells us, I am the good shepherd, he is leaning into that philosophy. And it may not be common or everyday for us, but it certainly was for Jesus and the Jews and the people of Israel, Palestine in the first century. Shepherding was very common. It wasn't a wildly agrarian region. It's pretty dry there, but people had flocks. They had sheep, and they would have to take them, right, free-ranging to sort of feed on whatever was available to protect them where they were going. We have lots of stories about sheep. This one isn't unfamiliar to us, is it? And we hear about the good shepherd what Jesus is saying is, I am the nurturer. And it's so common that when I read this passage, it's actually like two or three sermons in one. Just like last week, I'm not going to keep you here until two. But Jesus doesn't just say, I'm the good shepherd. Did you hear what else he said? What other claim he makes? I'm the gate. I'm the gate. What does that mean? He's the protector. So there's normally in town um, a pin that is built up in rock. There's a door that has a key. Uh, and often it's a communal pin because not everybody could afford their own. So they would pin up together. That's part of why knowing the voice matters is so that all the sheep of the multiple flocks don't just follow whomever. They know their shepherd by voice. They go to their shepherd when he calls. It's part of the culture and part of the time. But also, when they're out free-ranging, they can't just be out all night long because they're vulnerable and susceptible that way. And so the shepherd uses more of a temporary pin that has an opening but not a gate. So when he says, I am the gate, he's making a claim that all the shepherds which would, would make, which was after the sheep are pinned at night or for the night, the shepherd would lie down at that entry place. And it served two purposes. One primarily was to protect against predators, against robbers, against bandits. He was there literally to put his body, his life, in the way to protect those sheep. But the other thing that it did was it was a sign of assurance for the sheep. Because if they heard something, if they heard wolves or coyotes or some sort of predator, if they heard something that was unfamiliar, their tendency is to bolt. What do you do if your life's at risk? You run. 
So the shepherd at the gate, if they are sort of inclined to leave, he's there. And it's not just that he's impediment, but he's their sense of security. Oh, okay, we're good. <laughs> he's here. He's with us. And so they could settle down and they could calm down. So Jesus says, I am the gate. He's the one that says, I'm the protector, but also I am your assurance. All you need to do is look at me and know I'm here for you. I'm here to protect you. I'm here to care for you. I'm here to love you. You can just take a deep breath and be at peace. He is the gate and he is the good shepherd. And particularly in this passage, what we walk in on is a bit of an argument and a dispute. And what happened was Jesus healed a man who was born blind. Some of us have heard that story before. And it was kind of controversial. There's this whole dialogue about sin and who had sinned, him or his parents, or all these different things. And the Pharisees are really upset about what's going on. And so they're in this debate with him. And uh, Jesus is answering, well, no, it wasn't him. It was so that God would, it wasn't that the boy sinned and it wasn't that the parents sinned. It was so that God would be glorified. And the Pharisees are just sort of mad as all get out. And they're starting to throw accusations. He's demon-possessed, he's a fraud, he doesn't belong here, he's putting on a show, he's doing all these things. And Jesus says, hold on, hold on, hold on. What we expect of those who are against us, what we expect of those who are doing harm, of those who are thieves or those who are bandits or those who are um, demon-possessed, is that they're there to do us harm. And when do those who are there to do us harm come? At night, in the dark when they can't be seen, when they won't be recognized, when people aren't paying attention, when others are asleep, so they're not like, hey, something's going on over there. They come in the night. But he says, I'm not coming in the night. I'm not coming under, um, I'm not coming in secret. I'm coming to be known. Here I am, plain day, midday. This is me. And you know what that shows you? It shows you that I am good. It shows you that my intentions are pure. It shows you that I'm not trying to hide anything. I am the good shepherd. Now, with all the things that we've been learning about Jesus as the bread and Jesus as the light and Jesus as the shepherd, the other piece that we're learning is that it's not just about Jesus. He's just not talking, he's not just talking about himself as a man because lots of people are shepherds, right? He's also saying, God is the good shepherd. Hi, yeah, I am what we pull from the Old Testament. I am. God is the old. The Old Testament. God is the old shepherd. God's the old shepherd. He's also the good shepherd. Um, and that means that we know something about God. God is nurturer. God is protector. God is provider. And I don't know about you. Sometimes I have to sort of wrap my head, work at it to understand Jesus as bread or Jesus as light. But the one I don't have to stretch very far for is Jesus as good shepherd. God as good shepherd. Because I may not know much about sheep and I may not know much about shepherding in real life, but what I do know a whole lot about is nurturing care, loving affection. And that is an image of God that I can fully get behind. And when we sometimes tout or hear others tout that God is vengeful and God is angry, go, wait a minute. That sounds more like the bandits and the thieves. God is the good shepherd. God is the protector and the nurturer and the caregiver. So I have to wonder about some of those other claims that you're making. Because the one that I can go back to over and over again, because I saw it in how Jesus related to people, and I see it in how God it relates to us, and because it's something that just makes good sense, is that God is the good shepherd. That we could just fall asleep in God's arms. That we could just rest and be okay there. And if we're facing some storms, if life is just a mess, if the people around us are dealing with losses and heartache and confusion and hurt, and brokenness, what I can say is, may you rest in the arms of God. May you look to the Savior, the Good Shepherd, and have that sense of assurance and peace. God checks on you first thing in the morning, before the sun's even up, 
and God checks on you when it's time for bed. Morning until night, making sure that you're okay, tending to your needs and your wounds and your hurts, and loving you just as you were created to be. Thanks be to God. Amen.